Hello guys and welcome back to Let's Play XCOM Enemy Unknown. Now before I push on with this video, I need to make amends. Uh, one of my friends was watching one of my previous videos and noticed that one of the things I actually did in a previous video was to create some of the fusion lances for our interceptors. However, I never actually equipped them. There they are. I made more than enough for every single interceptor that I've got, but never bothered to equip them. Now, I've got two excuses for this. One of which is that, as I said uh, a couple of videos ago when I started doing these again, it's been a long time since I've uh, played XCOM. I had a big break from it over Christmas and pretty much forgot what I was doing. So I I'm still very rusty and that shows. The uh, second excuse I've got is that I've actually been playing this, uh, I've got a second uh, playthrough that I do. It isn't one that I've been recording, it's just one that I've been uh, messing around with for my own entertainment, but I'm playing it with some various mods uh, installed, and those mods basically um, mean whenever I build something, whether it's a piece of armour or weapon, they actually take a certain amount of time to construct the same way that they did in the original XCOM. So I'm not used to, ha because I've been playing that, I'm not used to having things being ready instantly. So I literally thought I was adding them to a build queue and then just forgot about them. So, But that's that's fixed now. They've all been added. Um, just realised there as well, it's been a while since I've looked here. Africa only has one um, interceptor, so it may be worth getting another firestorm for them just to give us full coverage. We probably New don't need one. Arrived this morning, Commander. We're always glad to have more help down here. I was going to say I probably can't afford to, to build one, but clearly I can. I've got more than enough stuff there. So, yeah, we might as well. We'll get one of those built while we can. Um, let's also just have a quick look and just remind ourselves what I we're doing. I appreciate your efforts to support the research team, Commander. I've already put the new recruits to work in the lab. So, this device, which is what we need to do to f finish endgame, I could research it now because it won't necessarily push the story forward that much. There's still something else I need to do, but I'm quite happy to just leave it there for the moment. There's nothing that I really need to do with that, to be quite honest. Um, somebody else that was also watching... Um, one of my previous videos noticed that my assault soldier wasn't carrying a um, alloy cannon and thought that I hadn't got them even though I got blaster launchers but no alloy cannon. Again that was just an oversight because I've had a few wounded people uh, I've been swapping soldiers around and I literally just didn't have a, a spare alloy cannon and forgot to um, swap equipment around so that uh, the new guy could take it. So Apart from all that, we're, we're pretty much good to go and carry on. So let's go into mission control. Let's speed things up a little bit and see what happens for us. Well, there's all the fusion lances done, which is good. I always get a bit worried sometimes that you're going to get a mass of uh, UFOs before they're ready. And we've got another round of sight testing complete, so let's have a look. No gift. Can't say I'm surprised. People with low willpower generally do, but... Let's go in and have a look. Do we have anybody else here that we can add in? Yes, we do. I mean, to be honest, most of our sort of top-ranking people have been in and have come out sort of failed. But let's put some of the new people in. I mean, to be honest, as I've said before, we don't technically need to have um, more than one person with psi powers. Having the psi power itself isn't important. You just need at least one person with the gift in order to be able to um, start the last mission as it were. So we'll just start testing people at random just so that uh, we might get one or two people with potential. Well that's unusual. We've got a a, a small scout. Normally we're expecting to have uh, bigger ships by this point, but it's only a scout. It's small. Let's attack this one with the EMP cannon. I know normally we go in with our um, sort of biggest, most damaging guns and do as much damage as possible. But let's see if we can knock this one down in one piece. I've got a feeling it's going to be a relatively straightforward mission. Of course, I should never say that. Well, it's gone down, that's good, so we'll send the Sky Ranger over. Now let's have a look at who we've got here. Um, now we've still got two assaults here. So, do I take a shiv or do I keep with the current loadout? 
Well, we've got a major. We've got a couple of sergeants. It would be nice to get some of these guys leveled up if we can. So I think I'm going to launch the mission. While we've got a relatively intact ship, uh, I've done my usual thing again of not actually looking at the hyperwave relay message, so I'm unsure of um, what the composition is here. But uh, Touching down. let's have a look. In fact, what I can do <laughs> is I can actually return to base and then look it up. So I'm going to do that. It should let me see it then. That's having one of those days. Right, let's have a look. Oh no, that's very interesting. So if you return to... Oh no, it's just booting me out of mission control. I was going to say, if you return to base, then you, you can't go to the UFO. But Right, so we've got seven. We've got an ethereal, mutant elites, cyber disks, and drones. There's probably two drones, one ethereal. So that would give us two, three, four, and then possibly three muton elites that's not too bad if if that is literally all we've got I can live with that again the ethereal is always the biggest problem berserkers are quite nasty as well floaters can also be a pain I mean let's face it most of the aliens in this game can be a pain is within the continental United States it looks like the alien but hopefully we can get some of our sort of lower ranked this guys sky, just north of the crash site. geared up a little Strike bit so loud and clear big sky so we'll monitor those readings from here we've got Strike some flares down the alien craft. let's have a look where are we going there's the sky ranger so it looks like the ufo's just Almost straight down. Could be wrong, but we shall have a look. We'll do what we can. Hopefully keep everybody alive. We know roughly how many uh, soldiers we've got to deal with. So, as usual, want to avoid making dash moves where we can. It's okay if we've got things like run and gun, of course, because run and gun gives us the ability to make a dash and still have a shot at the end of it, should we need be. So it is important that we actually uh, uncover where the aliens are. Again, not going to put my assault guy onto Overwatch just yet because I might actually want to take a shot with him. Now, um, is this the edge of the map here? There's quite a bit of a distance to the edge of the map, but I don't think there's going to be anything over there. I'm going to take a bit of a risk now, and I'm going to run this support guy up over here. And the reason I'm doing that is we know we're clear in this direction because of him. I was taking a risk and very much hoping that there was nothing over here to the side of us, but it is the edge of the map and I think we're clear there, so that's not too bad. Again, we might as well use our Let's sniper to his fullest advantage. Let's get him in the air. Let's give him as much of a height advantage as possible. That's about as far forward as he's going to get to move in a single turn. Now again, I could put him onto Overwatch with his pistol. Which wouldn't be too bad, because he actually has um, a decent pistol now. But while he's up there, let's get him to throw a battle scanner out. We may... Uh, ooh, camera's going wild. We may actually pick some aliens up, or at least get more of an idea of what direction we need to go in. Uh, and get a bit more of a peripheral vision over in that direction as well, in case now. anything decides it wants to come over from there. So, we've got some rocks, but there doesn't appear to be anything particularly special going on. So, while we think we're fairly covered, we will get our other assault guy, I think, over to this side. He can't move awfully far. He's got a bit of a bit of a limited movement. And this guy, I think we will actually have him up behind the truck. Again, it's a dash, but he should be fairly safe because we can see both sides of him. So, right, let's get everybody else on Overwatch. And again, thank you to one of my viewers whose name I cannot currently remember off the top of my head, but for pointing out that I can just tap the Y key to go onto Overwatch. I knew there was a key to do it, and I'd again forgotten what it was, so thanks very much for that, because that does speed things up an awful lot. So, well, we didn't see an awful lot of anything there, did we? Now, the trick is to keep pushing forwards, but at the same time trying to keep all of my guys together, not spreading out so much that they can't cover each other. So let's get doing that. I don't particularly like this part of the map here. There isn't an awful lot of cover. And I don't want to end up putting people out of cover. So I'm kind of zigzagging around. Make sure I keep as much of the uh, map covered as possible. You might as well dash up because we know that we're clear in that position. Because that's where the assault guy was before. 
Um, I think I'm going to get you to dash up behind that tree because if there was anything there, surely that battle scanner would be able to see it. So you're safe there. And there's one person we haven't moved, or two people we haven't moved because we haven't moved the sniper. So, what are we going to do with you? Now, I could move you up just a little and keep you within range there, or I could get you all the way up behind those rocks, but that could be a little bit risky. So let's just move you up here behind the truck for the time being. And if we can select our sniper. Let's move him forwards a little. And let's move him forwards a little bit more. Right, he still hasn't picked anything up. We'll put everybody else on Overwatch. So what I'm trying to do now, because my uh, sniper has the height advantage anyway, get him towards the front, and hopefully if I pull something on the next turn, I can actually use him to uh, fire a few shots. So again, let's get moving the assault guys up. So that's a fairly safe move for you. I think I'm going to leave him there just for the time being until we've got some more people moved up. Now you do have the run and gun ability, so I think what I'm going to do with you is actually move you forwards to this tree here. Hopefully if you do pull anything, our sniper should have a line of sight on it Contact. anyway. So there we go, instantly we've actually um, found the UFO and unfortunately found the ethereal as well, which is a bit of a pain. Um, now that ethereal is actually sort of buggered off into the back, which is not necessarily a good thing for me. So I'm going to start moving people up because I want to get people in position to be able to take these aliens down. Out of all the aliens I could have pulled on the uh, on the first round, that wasn't the best one to do. Um, I've got a 1% chance to hit him with rapid fire. I've got a 1% chance to hit him. Yeah, so basically I've got no chance to hit him. So I'm not going to be bothering um, with that. Uh, I can't move him. So what we'll do for now... I believe we will um, probably leave the sniper on overwatch, but I'm not going to do that just yet. I'm going to start getting some more of these guys up and around the sides, because we might have to take that ethereal out really quickly. If I'm perfectly honest, I wasn't expecting the UFO to actually be there, and it took me by surprise. So, okay, you can go on overwatch. Use <coughs> Excuse me, frog in my throat there. Uh, you still need to move up as well. Now, I'm taking a risk here because there could be something out on that far side. I'm hoping there isn't. Fingers crossed. Right. And you just have a better viewpoint. Sniper's going to go on Overwatch. And you're going to go on Overwatch. Actually, no. You're going to throw a smoke grenade onto this guy. Smoke's up. And you are going to go into Overwatch because you've got a 1% chance to hit. And even though sometimes I do take um, chances with the odds, I'm not taking 1%. Now, I've just seen another group over there to the left behind the uh, UFO. Um, that looks like a cyber disc and a drone to me. But I haven't pulled them yet, so let's not, um, let's not do that unnecessarily. Also can't see the ethereal, which is worrying. So let's move you around this side. Now, hopefully, that gives us line of sight on the th ethereal. Doesn't necessarily mean that our sniper can hit him because our sniper doesn't actually have um, our sniper doesn't actually have a line of sight to hit him, which is a bit of a pain. So, what I'm going to do is I am going to get our sniper on the ground and get him hopefully in a position where he can take a shot at that ethereal, providing somebody else can see him. So. We're quite limited for where we can move here, actually. I can't quite make the distance that I want to make, which is a shame. Um, oh dear. Well, I guess I can, actually. I can um, move him here. He doesn't get to take a shot this turn with his sniper rifle anyway. He wouldn't have done. Uh, now, one thing I don't want to do at the moment is activate that group over there. That would be bad. I'm going to get my assault guy up here because they he usually uh, sorry my support guy because he usually has a pretty good shot support as a class generally is a, is a fairly decent aim uh, also going to move my heavy over here what I want to start trying to do if I can is causing problems for that um, muton elite there so I think we'll cause him a bit of suppression 
Now that will also increase our chances of hitting him with somebody else. Now you've only got a 26% chance to hit. That is a bit crap to be honest. But you can mine frag. Now that's got an 87% chance to actually hit and it will do some damage. Oh it failed. Oh what a what a shame. That's unusual. But still we get to keep firing. Again I want to avoid going over there. I don't want to um I don't want to activate that group. But there again on the other hand I do. Because if I could get a rocket across there, because I can I reach with a shredder? No, it's just slightly out of range. And if I move here, I won't be able to fire anyway, and I'll probably activate them. So, for the time being, he's going to go here, and he's going to go on Overwatch. Now, we are taking a bit of a risk here. Now, can you actually hit him? You've only got a 31% chance to hit, or a 16 with rapid fire. Um, let's try it anyway. I doubt we're going to get a hit from there. But at the same time, I also doubt he's going to come running out, so I might as well. And uh, you're still here. Now, what am I going to do with you? Again, got to be careful because of those uh, that cyber disc over there. So, while we've got a running gun, might as well use it. And let's get you over here into cover. Hopefully, we won't get a grenade coming our way. So, let's put you on overwatch. Can't do an awful lot else. It's the alien's turn. Alright, oh, so we actually got two groups of cyber discs. Now that's not ideal. Um, still though, the ethereal is our biggest threat. By a long shot, the ethereal needs to go first. So before I do anything else, I'm going to click on my sniper. And have a look at headshots. And hopefully, you can see the ethereal. 75% chance to hit with a headshot, because I don't have my height advantage here. Right, we've left him with one hit point. Now, I should get double tap. So, 75% chance to hit again. With any luck, this will connect. I only need one hit point, so as long as it hits, he's dead. And he's reflected it back at me. Delightful. Um, at least it only did two damage, which isn't the worst thing that could have happened. Now, do I have anyone that could actually get a grenade in there? Because if I could reach him with a grenade, that would secure his death. But at the same time, I've got to be careful of those cyber discs. We haven't pulled the cyber discs on this side yet, which again is a very good thing. So I think what I'm going to do with you, and this again is very risky, I'm going to move this guy over here and accidentally pull that cyber disc. Yeah, I wasn't expecting to be close enough to pull the cyber disc there, but still, that's my decision and I stand by it. What I want to try and do is... Wow, that's still really low odds to hit that guy. Um, let's take them anyway. Let's see what we can do. Yeah, we did get a hit. Now, that cyber disc has moved closer. Can I hit it from there with a shredder rocket? Yes, I can. And let's just count up what we know we had. We, ha we, we had seven aliens in total. We had those two... Three, uh, three with the cyber disc and four with the drone. Five, six, seven. So we found all the aliens on the map. So we haven't got to worry about pulling anything else. What I want to be able to do is get a grenade on that ethereal. That is my biggest concern at the moment. As well as killing that guy. Um, I'm not sure how much damage the ethereal can do at the moment. I may, I may just leave him and see what he does, to be honest. This rocket should take out both drones and severely damage the cyber disc on that side. In fact, we actually destroyed the cyber disc because we had the heat ammo. So that's brilliant. Three aliens for one rocket. That's uh, that's well worth it. Um, haven't got to worry about aliens on this side too much now. Now, you have rapid fire. If I run you there, it's going to be a dash and you can't do anything. What are your chances to hit? 21%. That's not good at all. Um, that will only do 5 damage so it won't kill him and it doesn't have enough distance to take out the ethereal who else have we got we've got you now you don't have your running gun either so you're pretty much in the same boat but let's move you forwards a little bit and then we can use you for additional cover I could use flush I guess on this guy 51% chance to hit and it will do him some damage there he goes he has moved it's not necessarily put me in anything of a better position, but 
now. Well, according to this, you actually do have a move you can take. I don't want to run and gun with you, ideally. Anywhere I put you is going to be a dash. So, let's put you the other side of this wall. You should be in sufficient enough cover there. Don't know what it is that he can see. Cyberdisc's retreating a little, with the looks of things. Now he's taking a shot. And it was a hit. Quite a painful hit as well, but... Nothing fatal right now. What's the ethereal going to do? He's going to try something now, which I do not like. Is that a mind control? Kill. Kill. Kill them all. Yeah, that's a mind control. That's not a problem, though, because he can't actually do anything on this turn. It takes one turn for the mind control Take person to become active. Apart from such things like um, lightning reflexes and the uh, sort of automatic overwatch that certain assault um, perks give you, they activate instantly, but... As long as I kill the ethereal now, which is exactly what I intend to do, assuming of course that we don't miss, he hasn't moved, 75% chance to hit and that should be the kill shot. So the ethereal's dead. Which means our guy's no longer mind controlled. We've still got this um, cyber disc to worry about. Now he has been shredded. Problem is, I'm not going to be able to get close enough with that to hit him, which is a real pain. Um, I mean, I can move closer. The problem I've got is that if I move, I'm not going to be able to actually hit him with my rocket, so that's a bit annoying. 59% chance to hit. Well, let's take it anyway. Might be enough. And it was. There we go. Takes more damage because it was shredded. I think we got the drone over there when we fired the rocket, which means the last guy is this guy here. Now, he's suppressed. Which means he probably can't actually do anything. Now, what do we do have? It, uh, close and personal, right? We don't have lightning reflexes. What are my chances to hit with rapid fire? Next to nothing. So, what we will do is we'll see if we've got anybody else that can hit him. That's right, he's panicking because he was mind controlled, which means he's pretty much useless for this turn. Um, you still have your flush. 39% chance to hit. And it does make him move, so he's no longer suppressing us now. And we get our automatic reaction shot because we've got close combat. Another day, another successful operation. So that was quite a nice mission, actually. Did, did accidentally pull a few things when I didn't want to. But that's XCOM for you. You rarely want to pull uh, more than one group at once. But no, I'm quite happy with the outcome of that. I didn't notice anybody getting promoted, which is a bit of a shame. It was the main reason for doing Great it, but we'll have a look. Commander. I hope all of our deployments go this well. Well, there we go. We did actually get a promotion. So, again, we can give you the heat ammo or the rapid reaction. Um, heat ammo. It, it's got to be. Literally, there are so many cyber disks and sector pods. The heat ammo is just absolutely brilliant for them. Um, the rapid reaction is good. Uh, but it, all it essentially does is give you a second reaction shot. But what you've got to remember is heavies are a pretty poor aim. So even if they do get a reaction shot, the chances are it won't hit anyway. And they only get the second shot if the first one hits. So it's a no-brainer, really. So go for the heat ammo. And everybody comes back alive. We've got a mutant elite corpse, some cyberdis, another ethereal, another drone wreck. So, yeah, a fair few bits and pieces. Let's go back to the grey market as usual, just sell off all the junk. Don't need that many Thin Man corpses, really, do we? It's not like we need the money either, but... Look at the alien alloys. 500 alien alloys. That's just ridiculous. Even the weapon fragments. I've got so much stuff now. Literally, so much stuff I don't know what to do with it. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's not some bad going, actually. Um, I don't think there's anything else that I need to do there now. Let's have a look, see what we've got coming up. Yeah, Firestorm's still nine days away. We should now be able to build another mine shield. Now, where's the mine shields under? I also think what I'm going to do is build another couple of suits of Titan armor, because why not? I can afford it, and at least we've got some spare. I did notice earlier that we, we were running out. Now, we don't have Psy armor yet either. I suppose what I could do, what I probably should do, is I will actually research this device. I accept the fact that there could be risks involved in studying this new alien device, but the enemy leaves us with no other choice. 
because by doing this now I'm essentially going to be able to start building the next tier of armor. Um, I still didn't get that mine shield. Um, oh, apparently, I can, does that mean I've got two or I can make two? No, I've got two and I can make a third. So let's do that. And then we'll just speed things up now until that um, research is complete so you guys can see what happens. So having learned a great deal about the hyperwave beacon and its associated interdimensional signalling capabilities, we believe this newly recovered device confirms our suspicions about this technology and takes it a step further. The Psylink, as it is now being called, appears to provide a direct link to the psionic network used by the aliens for field communications. Although we are treading into an area of highly theoretical science, we believe there is a strong indication that the aliens function under a collective consciousness, a form of social organisation akin to a hive mind, as seen in various species of insects found on Earth. It wasn't until our first interaction with the ethereal species of alien that we were able to understand the scope of the psionic abilities we had previously been exposed to. Although we've only scratched the surface in terms of developing psionic abilities within a human subject, we've now theorised that it may be possible to join the alien's consciousness, uh, consciousness and tap into their hive mind by successfully activating this device. However, in order to ensure the safety of XCOM's headquarters, we'll need to have to construct a chamber that minimises the potential risks to the rest of the facility during the activation process. As it so happens, two of our brightest young minds, a team of brothers, have already conceived of just such a facility appropriate to the task. If we manage to locate a soldier with an aptitude for psionics, which we already have because we've got one soldier who's already um, got the psionic gift, and find a means to develop these abilities further, I believe it will only be a matter of time before we succeed in activating the device and finding the source of this invasion. So, now we can actually um, make the Gollop Chamber. And this is a little um, nod, a little bit of homage to the um, Gollop brothers who actually uh, designed the original XCOM game. Um, as it says, two, two brothers. And they're the Gollop brothers, so nice little bit of lore in there. So we can now build this Gollop chamber. And we can also now uh, make Psy armor, uh, or research Psy armor. Although I'm short of Illyrium, which is strange, because the amount of stuff I've got, and I don't have enough Illyrium. Weird. Um, so I can't research that just yet. Uh, let's just have a look at engineering and facilities. Device as soon as possible. Considering what we went through to get it, we should be making every effort to provide a secure location for its storage. There we go. Uh, power. We're only using 69 of 107, so we've got plenty of power. So what we'll do is we'll, act it, we'll uh, excavate out this area here, and that's where we'll build the Gollop Chamber. And that should give me the achievement then for building on all four levels. And once the Gollop Chamber is built, it won't actually push anything on until we uh, put one of our Psy Soldiers in there and activate the Gollop Chamber. That will then give us the, uh, the final mission, as it were. So, yeah, that, that wasn't too bad. Nice little mission. I intended to use it to get some uh, lower-ranked soldiers leveled up. And although we only got one promotion, I did, a, I did achieve what I set out to do. Got all my firestorms uh, with the correct weapons on them now. So, yeah, we're pushing along nicely towards the end mission. So, once again, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've been having such an amazing time making these i love this game to pieces and it's so much fun and uh i think everyone should go out and try it if it's your sort of thing if you like strategy particularly turn-based strategies because there aren't many out there this this really is a, a brilliant game to give a try but uh, i hope you've enjoyed watching them as much as I, i've enjoyed making them please like subscribe uh favorite and share these videos because they all help me out and uh, i'll continue making them and uh, the only sad thing is that there probably isn't an awful long time left now on this series that we're getting quite close to the end and uh, yeah that's a bit of a sad thing so until the next mission I will see you soon